Hello and welcome to the first section of the Marine Biodiversity Data Mobilization Workshop with an introduction to Darwin Core. Um, you know, Darwin Core is intended to facilitate the sharing of information about biological diversity. So that's really what Darwin Core is all about. It's used by um, many different systems, um, including uh, the Ocean Biodiversity Information System, or OBIS, and the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GBIF. If you want to learn more about either of those two systems, there are links here that you can click on to learn more. Um, going back a little bit, the main part of, of Darwin Core is uh, the observation of an organism at a particular place in time. In Darwin Core, this is known as an occurrence. And these are basically the, the main part of what we will be working on in this workshop, or sharing occurrence data. Darwin Core is um, you know, a, a set of terms, and um, these give structure to the information. And so they have definitions. These terms have definitions. But the actual format of the data is what's called Darwin Core Archives. A Darwin Core Archive is not anything complex. It's just a zipped folder um, containing the data, which is one or several uh, tab-separated files, an ecological metadata language EML XML file, which describes the data set, and then a meta.xml file, which describes what's in the zip folder. So it's really pretty simple. Um, you can click here to download an archive and look at it for yourself and kind of get a sense of it. Um, so the main part of what we'll be doing here and what you need to do to start getting your data shared to OBIS or GBIF is um, a Darwin Core mapping. Basically what you need to do is you need to take your data that you have um, and uh, map it to the Darwin Core terms. So we have an exercise here for you to do where you can try that out. Uh, we have some example column headers with some example data, and we want you to go and find uh, where which Darwin Core terms these match to best. And the way I like to go do that when I'm doing this Darwin Core mapping pro process is to go to the Darwin Core Quick Reference Guide. Um, so here is where all of the Darwin Core terms are listed. And, um, you know, there's a couple ways you can navigate. Sometimes if I'm just looking for a term in particular, maybe something related to a term, um, you know, so maybe I'm looking for uh, just date. I'll do a, a search like that, and then that helps me find uh, you know, I might click on that and read the definition and see, oh, okay, this matches the information I have in my date field, or it doesn't. Um, but this is one way to navigate in here. The other way is that these are the Darwin Core uh, classes. So here's occurrence, which we just talked about. And at the top here, you can see all the terms in those classes. Now, um, the way these are organized, it might not resonate for you right now, but um, it's helpful to see, okay, you know, here's a, a list of terms, you know, a bunch of terms listed here together. And then if one catches your eye, you can click on it and you can read the definition about it. So that's how I like to navigate in the uh, quick reference guide. So after you do that, um, you know, one of the major things that we'll be working on in this workshop is getting data shared to OBIS. And so what you might want to know, there's a lot of terms in Darwin Core. So what are the required terms? What are the ones I absolutely have to have in order to share data to OBIS? So that's what's in this table here are the terms that are required to share to OBIS and a few that are required for GBIF. Um, so you can see all of those here with their definitions and some examples. We also have um, terms that you can consider um, that are really helpful to have, like depth is really important for OBIS, and then the um, coordinate uncertainty in meters, which kind of gives you the, um, the uncertainty around uh, geolocation, those can be really important for downstream analyses. So, you know, consider trying to incorporate these if you can. Um, and then 
basically what we want you to do now is to map your data if you haven't done that already. So um, the, the main exercise after this uh, talk is to take your data and create a Darwin core mapping. And it'll kind of look like what's up here. Sorry for the scrolling, but it'll look like this where you have your term, um, maybe in a spreadsheet or something, you have your terms here, and then you'll have which Darwin core term those map to. And that will help you with getting started with, okay, how am I actually gonna format my data to Darwin core? And we can of course help you with that. So um, that's a quick, sort of overview of Darwin Core and what's on this page for you, and we'll be moving into breakouts.